Hello, today I'm going to do a tutorial on recording with the Tascam 244 Cassette Porter Studio. I particularly want to focus on bouncing down to an external device. In this case, I'll be using a Hi-Fi VHS recorder. I'm hoping that using VHS will retain more of the detail than would be the case if I was to do an internal bounce on the 4-track. This is due to it having a higher frequency rate and signal to noise ratio than cassette tape. As you're probably aware, bouncing or the ping pong technique is a common process when using a four track as it enables more performances to be captured to tape as several parts are mixed together and recorded to one individual track. This enabled bands such as the Beatles to record such complex arrangements as they did on Sgt Peppers where the track count was very limited. Right, so let's get started recording the first couple of tracks. Now I've got two parts to record simultaneously for this first take. Now normally you'd put it into sync mode and you select the tracks you want. So you can either go one or three or two and four. And I'm going to record on one and two. That's the way you'd normally do it. However, I'm using a second hand tape here, which has already got material on it. So I'm going to record all four channels at once. Then we're going to swap it over from sync to four channel recording. I'm only going to put signals on channel one and two, but at the same time, it will just wipe channels three and four. Right, next thing to do is you need to pan hard left and right to send it to the appropriate bus. So you can see here, left bus is one and three, and the right bus is two and four. I'm going to record um, one guitar onto track one, that's the left and one to track two, so that's been turned right. The other thing you have to change is the input mode. So at the top here, you've got three toggle switches. Um, off is the middle one, and you've got tape to the right, and mic or line to the left. So I'll be swapping those both to mic and line for tracks one and two, and leaving it off for tracks three and four, so that will wipe those tracks. Right, so pop the tape in there. I'm going to be using a couple of dynamic microphones. And from previous experience, I know you have to really kind of crank it up a bit on the 244 to get enough gain on those. I'll get that ready over here, which I can adjust when we get started. My friend Stephen's coming over in a bit, so we'll start off by recording a couple of guitar parts for the foundation of this track. <laughs> I've got our first take down now. A couple of things to do before we start playing stuff back. First thing is to move this into the safe mode so you can't record over any material we just done. And then I need to change the input from mic over to tape so we can actually hear back what was recorded. Before I press play as well, I'm going to pop it into remix mode so I can control the levels from down here. Let's hear how things sound. Two. On the next two channels, I'm going to overdub some bass and some drums. For this, I'll go through the same procedure again. I'm going to reset the levels for tracks three and four. I can turn down the trim on one and two now. The first thing I'm going to do is to do the, uh, the drum part. We get the, the trim level set for that. And obviously you need to pan it hard left and right again. Now this time it's really important we put it into the, the cue mode so we don't over record or mix down the tracks we've already done on one and two on the following tracks. Okay, let's lay down the next parts. Let's have a quick listen back to see how that sounds. Right, so what I want to do next is to mix this externally onto two tracks, then I can re-import it back into a, a later section of the tape and add some extra parts on top. 
normally you'd only record on three tracks and then you'd bounce those down to the final track to then kind of free it up to do some more overdubs. But with this piece today, I want to experiment with sending it out to a VHS recorder and then bring that back in and re-record it later on in the tape. Now the idea being that I want to try to keep as much detail as possible from the original mix, but keep it all analog. To do this, I'm going to pan the rhythm guitar, uh, the drum and the tambourine part to one channel so that we kept on the right hand side. And then the slide guitar, I'm going to keep on the left, which will keep it separate. I've now panned these across. I'm going to flip the monitor over to remix, do a quick level check and then record this out to VHS tape. I'm using the main outs at the back here, putting those into the audio input of the Hi-Fi video recorder. We've recorded those parts back into the four track. Now I've got the um, rhythm track on one. It's the drums, the tambourine and the rhythm guitar. Then I've got the, the main slide part on track two. Let's hear that back. Right, I might give this a little boost on the bass here. So I'm boosting it around the 70 hertz frequency. Then I'm going to swap over and listen to the slide track. So I don't know what you think, but I think that's retained a lot of the original quality, which is uh, pretty impressive, considering it's kept analog. And there's both parts put in. Next, I want to lay down a guitar and a bass part on the remaining two tracks. Before we do the overdubs, we need to remember to set up the input section correctly. Uh, so at this point, I will need to go into the sync mode, which if you remember from the start means it records onto um, one or two tracks at once. For this one, I'm going to be recording onto track three, first of all, which is the left bus. We need to pan that to the left and then need to remember to flip this back onto mic and line for the input. And finally, need to change this back to Q and turn the input selector off for track four. And then I'll repeat the same procedure for track four when I do the overdub. Okay, let's lay down the next parts. Right, all the instruments are recorded. I'm going to take input selector to tape for track four, pop that onto safe mode, and we're ready to listen back and see how things sound. So slide track here, and slightly to the left. Okay, we boost the bass a bit on rhythm track and turn up the, the electric guitar touch here I'll also add a delay to that as well so I'm going to use the, the send effects here and add a little bit of delay to the lead guitar part let's watch back the original performances with the final mix down to an external hi-fi VHS recorder Hey, well there we have it. Now obviously that's just a bit of a blues jam, but hopefully you can get an idea what you can do with this sort of technique. 
Now my feeling is that it certainly helped to use the videotape there as the external bounce and I think you probably retain a bit more quality than you otherwise would if you just bounced internally. Now let me know if you'd like to see a video where I do a direct comparison between the internal and external bounce and you know get more of a kind of clear picture of the kind of quality gain. Now if you've got any questions about the technique or you've got some ideas for future videos you'd like to see in this channel please get in touch and let me know but for the moment thanks again for watching and hope to see you next time.